Hi, everybody. Welcome to the IC Topic Chat for today. It's the 1st of February. Welcome. We uh, are talking about a core topic. Core topics are those topics that we do every year, and there's one of them every month. And we started that because, well, at a certain point, we said, what are we going to talk about all the time? We're going to meet every week. we got to think of something to talk about. Well, we decided there are certain topics that people bring up all the time. They post it in the AEA independent consulting TIG um, listserv frequently, or it's something that's covered as an annual topic at the pre-conference workshops at the AEA conference. And uh, this is my favorite topic, honestly. I feel like I talk about it all the time. And if you've been around for a while, this be, you've probably heard this several times. If you've ever, we, we kind of kicked this off. It's one of the early pieces of the conference, pre-conference session is just talking about your niche or some people say niche, I don't know. I've been doing it forever, I call it niche. But um, let's get into it. Let me get my, my presenter notes up here. Here we go. So I do wanna point out there's three books that I seem to reference throughout. Um, there's probably another one I added in here. I, I need to probably update these slides, but how to Ikigai, which you'll understand what that is in a little bit. Good to Great, which is, my Forever Reference by Jim Collins, uh, one of the most famous, most uh, read, most sold business books of all time. Um, and then one that is probably not well read or sold, The Toilet Paper Entrepreneur, uh, which is also kind of just a kind of a hilarious book. But um, actually, I think it's actually pretty well read, but it's a little more uh, banal, uh, I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, so the key questions we want to think about today is really who are we as independent consultants? Who are who? What is our firm? What do we want to do? How do we want to operate? So you start by saying who do I want to serve, and that kind of leads to what type of serv services do I offer, which really relates to how do I want to spend my time. I like to start by talking about um, this hedgehog concept. This hedgehog concept is something that's discussed pretty deeply in Jim Collins' Good to Great book. And um, I think it's a good reference for thinking about how to go about your, well, your business, thinking about who you want to serve, but perhaps even the way you should think about your life. Um, the Hedgehog and the Fox was an essay by an English philosopher, Isaiah Berlin. And um, it was referenced in his book, and basically you think about the hedgehog as being kind of like this little porcupine, right? It's not Sonic the Hedgehog, which, you know, my children know, but um, it's a hedgehog that is kind of like a porcupine that moves slowly. He moves with direction. He or she moves with a direction um, with purpose. And the hedgehog, if attacked, stops and curls up like a ball, and is protected by their quill, right? And the fox darts around from thing to thing in this idea. And the fox is perhaps without purpose um, and isn't very well, doesn't really get anywhere, but the hedgehog continues moving forward in a very slow and purposeful manner. It's a bit of the same kind of a conversation as the, the tortoise and the hare, kind of a similar idea. Well, getting this hedgehog concept into um, a, come on now, here we go, into a diagram, we think about, you wanna probably model yourself after the hedgehog, not after the fox. And, just, and to do that, it's best to think about three kind of overlapping circles as this Venn diagram. Start with what you love. A lot of us find out work-wise, um, what do you want to do? Why do you want to do these things? What is it that you love about your work? And we find we, we find this over a period of our career. Oftentimes we are thinking about it perhaps in high school, but really it, maybe it comes into fruition during college. And then we start our career and we realize that's a terrible job and we need to do something different. And then through time, we find ourselves in that place where we know what we want to do, who we want to serve, what how we want to go at go about it. But you overlap that with what hopefully you're good at, right? What are you good at? Um, for me, 
I love education. I have a PhD in education and university, university things. And I just, I finished my undergraduate degree and I was like, this is great. I want to work in universities for the rest of my life. I had just a real passion for it. Um, I realized with time that I was good at data analysis. I learned, ex I learned Lotus 1, 2, 3 before there was a Microsoft Excel because my, my father introduced it to me. And um, it became a, an effective way for me to just crunch data. And so as people were figuring out Excel, I was always kind of two steps ahead. I never really meant to be, it just happened to be that way. Um, and so it became a, an effective way for me to break things down and, and communicate information. And so I'm good at communicating information. And um, that's where it came from. The next piece is what can you get paid for? And so this is super important because um, you can be, you can love what you're doing. You can be really good at something, but unless you can find somebody to pay you <laughs> to do that thing, um, you're going to find yourself in an unsustainable situation. So what you want to think of in this hedgehog concept by Jim Collins is to find where those three circles overlap. And for, for a second here, I want to talk about um, the things where they overlap and they don't meet the center. So if you can get paid for to do something you love, but you're not good at it, you're probably not going to get paid for it because you're not good at it. So you're, you're on target. Stick with it. If you love it, keep learning, keep learning. You'll get there. If you love something that you're good at, but you can't get paid for it, um, you know, you may need to change your, your focus. You may be out, you're going to be out of focus with your, your niche. Now, the problem lies when you're really good at something that you get paid very well at, but you don't love it. And this is what I like. To, this is this is the golden handcuff situation. There's a lot of books out there about corporate lawyers who find themselves in this situation, and you really don't want to be there. And there's a lot of our colleagues, I think, who are really good at their program evaluation, but they don't love their clients. They don't, they've fallen out of love with their work, and they're paid very well. Um, and I think this is a dangerous place to be because this is the this is the place where we find, start finding um, negative activities that we do to support the thing we have to do because we're in that golden handcuff situation. And this is, this is the area for divorces and alcoholism and just all kinds of bad things. You wanna get, you wanna stay out of that. If you're there, find a way to find, find yourself back to something that you love and you're back in this area. Now, a couple of years ago, I started thinking a lot about something else that I think was missing from this, from our perspective as um, evaluation consultants. A lot of us are not working to make money per se. Uh, we certainly need it and it makes our lives a little bit easier, but we probably didn't get into program evaluation um, and as independent consultants because we only wanted to make money. We wanted to do this because uh, we felt drawn to it from some purpose. A lot of us are out there trying to help our clients save the world and whatever that means. So I, I like to introduce the idea of Ikigai. Now, ikigai um, from the Oxford English Dictionary is a motivating force. This is a Japanese word. Um, it is your, it is helping you think about what the world needs. And so I like to think that you should start with those three circles, but then also kind of overlap. Is this, is this helping do something great for the world that's going to promote um, world peace or happiness or something, whatever it is that you're, you're, um, you and your clients are trying, you're trying to support your clients and helping them do this fantastic thing for what the world needs. All right. And it is a Japanese Okinawan idea, by the way. And I will also say this is a, an Americanization or a Westernization of this idea. I think anybody who really studies Ikigai wouldn't use a Venn diagram, but I think it's helpful, particularly with our Western brains to help think about it. And it also helps me think about what I should be doing and keeps me on focus. Oh, so here's some more pieces about that. Um, so we started by supporting educational organizations. We're good at data analysis. We're getting paid because we do STEM evaluation and we've, we've become an evaluation firm that supports 
funded educational initiatives through professional pro program evaluation. So that's kind of like the evolution of the, of the four circles as they overlap. So you take this idea and you think about this from the flywheel concept, which is the next concept in G Jim Collins's book. So flywheel, it's a mechanical device, it's in your, it's part of your car. I don't really know what it means exactly. I know it's important and it makes my car go. And it's generally the reference for, um, for this because you're talking about creating inertia. I like to think about the Ferris wheel on Navy Pier, that's in Chicago, just north of where I am right now. And uh, the Ferris wheel goes around in a circle. And I think about the Ferris wheel as the faster that Ferris wheel is spinning, that is a kind of a metric for how well my business is doing. If it's sitting still, nothing is happening with my business. If I can get it spinning a little bit, that's generating revenue. We're doing work, we're doing good things, we're supporting the world. So think about spinning that Ferris wheel and it's physically you doing it. So you have to reach up and you grab on that Ferris wheel and you just kind of have to start spinning. And so if uh, this works, it'll start spinning here a little bit. And then if you spin and you keep doing it and you keep pulling and you keep showing up and you're focusing your attention in one direction, you're not over here buying popcorn. You're not walking down the Navy pier to see what's going on in the children's museum. You're focused on that Ferris wheel. So it spins a little bit faster as you continue to focus your efforts on the Ferris wheel, not over here and not over there as a fox, but as the hedgehog, you continue to focus your efforts. And so you continue to spin and it continues to spin faster because you're, and then now I know everybody's going to have a problem, but that's the point. You're focusing your attention in a direct manner to continue to spin that wheel. The, the faster the wheel spins, the more um, you're going to see success because you're staying focused within your niche, within the four circles that I just described. This is the, this is the beauty of, of the niche, or perhaps it's the art. Um, it's difficult to determine whether you're in the middle of your niche or not, particularly when you're first starting. All, a lot of us who've, who've been around this for a while, have kind of figured it out. We're all, it's still an art. I think we're, it's, our, our niches continue to change, particularly as we grow and mature within our, our profession. And our clients continue to grow and mature and they change and they turn over their staff and they change their focus, they change their vision, they change their mission. And so do we. Um, I've certainly changed a lot with my firm with uh, the addition of several more people and most notably my partner in life and work um, to join us. And so we actually changed our entire mission statement. So our, in many ways, our whole niche is, I would say it's grown but that's because we've been able to just add in a lot of work. So what we're talking about is going from the left to the right. You're growing more and more in focus as you, as you grow and you think about it. And effectively, how do you find if you're in your niche? Well, if you're not kidding, if you're, if you're doing work and uh, you're not getting paid or you're, you're struggling to find work, perhaps you need to continue to change it all up. So here's a couple more ideas about this whole big idea here. Um, Michael Michalowicz, that's the toilet paper entrepreneur, says the big not so secret secret to finding your niche is to be really, really good at very, very little. And the point of this is you, you find your niche and you get really, really, really good. So people seek you out for whatever that is. And now everybody wants to come talk to you because in my world, here's an example. We are very, very good, or really, really good at DODIA program evaluation. DODIA is a small sector of the Department of Defense that's focused on military connected students. They get grants, they're not big ones. Um, our friend Kurt Stuke here, he's, he, he's in this area too. Um, we've learned how to, to help people write those grants. We don't write grants, we're not grant writers, but we will help people write those grants because we understand we're very close with the program officer. We know a lot of the project directors, we show up to the meetings. That's our extremely specific niche. It's very, very small, but right now I'm looking at about, I don't know, it's like 16 projects that we're doing right now for that, that very small sector. And that's, we're really, really good at that very, very specific niche. And there is that niche for you. So that's, it can be, and it's 
it's we've used that to spin into different things like our STEM camp program, which for the last three years was worth as a program a million dollars a year. And I'm the I'm the principal investigator. That never would have happened if I hadn't been extremely specific about my niche and really understanding what's going on there. And we're trying to do that in a lot of different areas right now, too. Warren Buffett has this quote. So you'll see if you're reading this, this is all about saying no. And that's the next piece of what I want to talk about. And this is a special uh, thing for me because I love this next quote. I use it all the time. And she's here. I just saw she had, was admitted into the thing. Here's Nikki Bowman's quote. So this was a quote that we put into the journal New Directions for Evaluation for Independent Consulting a special journal in 2019. And so thank you, Nikki, for providing that, this reference and this quote, and I continue to use it with my niche. So thank you for being here too. Now I'm gonna add this, this is brand new material. I've been thinking a lot about um, philosophy, particularly stoicism and stoic philosophy. And Ryan Holiday is kind of like this very um, popular writer in this area. And I just heard this chapter this morning as I was um, as I was driving back from dropping off my partner from, at the airport this morning as she's flying off to the Caribbean to go do yoga or whatever. But Ryan Holiday talks about keeping the main thing, the main thing. So when people ask you these questions or this question, you know this one, and this is my favorite. This is What's the answer? It's not necessarily no, I can tell you that. The answer is, does it fit within my niche? So I'd like to uh, finish by talking, by recognizing today is the first day of Black History Month and to think about, about uh, Booker T. Washington. This is an exact quote from Ryan Holiday's book, Discipline is Destiny. And that's the book I didn't, I didn't put in the earlier pages. And this is what, what's written in the book. Booker T. Washington was a busy man. You know, he ran the Tuskegee Institute, in which he founded. He traveled constantly to speak to crowds and meet donors. He lobbied legislators. He gave lectures and led fundraising campaigns. And he published five books. I mean, how did he manage it all? It wasn't just endurance and hustle and energy. It was also the discipline to say the dreaded word, no. And this is his quote, Booker T. Washington's quote, the number of people who stand ready to consume one's time to no purpose is almost countless. Booker T. Washington knew that the main way to be successful in life is to keep the main thing, the main thing, particularly when your main purpose in life is uplifting an entire race of people. So thank you for that, um, Booker T. Washington. And thank you for that, Ryan Holiday, for identifying that and just happened to put it on the day when I'm uh, putting the session together, it couldn't have been more perfect. So we're gonna go into the chat function. I'm gonna stop the recording in a minute. Here's some things I want you to think about and we can, we can start as a conversation piece is how do you know if you have a good niche? And I particularly want my experienced independent consultants who've been doing this for a while, how did you find it? Or if you're in the early stages, ask questions about whether you're on, on track um, and we can help you. How do you, how, is it a poor niche? How do you know? Um, how long do you wait out what might be a poor niche before you, it becomes a, a good niche? I mean, again, this is an art. There's no science to this. And then how do you know, know when to say yes and no to things? All right, so the, before we go, here's our upcoming sessions. We're gonna be doing set aside programs maybe next week. Nobody's reached out to me. I can't do set aside programs. I've never, I've never received set aside funds. Somebody at, suggested this and I haven't had any takers. If that doesn't happen, then I'm going to do an IC firm session on employee costs, which I seem to know a lot about lately. The subcontracting fair is in two weeks. Um, we moved the marketing top, topic up, the core topic up to the 22nd, because I, I wanted to make sure we have time for Nathan Browning and Lily Sussman to talk about the AEA conference pro proposal process, um, and they were better available on March 7th. Um, and uh, I'm excited, to, and I don't even know how we're going to do it yet, but Becky and I are going to talk about getting paid on March 14th. Um, so with that, thanks, everybody. Um, if, you, if you're here live, don't go away. If you're um, on YouTube, 
Nice to see you guys, but I'll see you later. Bye-bye.